Let's talk about the second paper and the second section for your 2019 geography paper. The very first question was the salient features of the west flowing river. Now this is a kind of very direct question. We have the east and the west flowing rivers. So the major west flowing rivers are Namda and Tapti. Then you have Mahi, Sabarmati and few others. So you have the details that we have mentioned in this class. And what you have to mention out is when we are understanding the differences between the east and the west flowing rivers, we are automatically high highlighting the characteristics of those and those would help us understand automatically what are the salient features for the west flowing river so a very very direct question the next question talks about wildlife conservation and management and the problems associated with it so we have covered that elaborately in these two lectures so just go back the links are available in the description below and then you would be able to understand the various efforts uh, both at a global level and at the level of the country so you would have the wildlife uh, institution you would have the dehradun protection centers that are talked about the project rhino the project uh, elephant the project crocodile that we have released and then uh, the problem of poaching the problem of hunting that would be addressed in this question so a very very basic and a very very important question the next question is again very very important you are trying to correlate the price of the land vertical growth of the slums in the large cities now what actually happens is uh, you have a huge migration to the urban area. Now with such a huge migration to the urban area you have the land that is limited and when you have overflowing of the people in let's say a limited parcel of the land what would happen is immediately there would be a rise in the price. So the prices shoots up like anything similar to uh, any other economic facility that you are availing be it the oil prices be it any other prices you have a shoot up in the cases of the land prices that are seen. And so Slowly and gradually when you have a lot of auto dependent economy or automobile dependent economy we could say you would have the vertical growth that starts to take place because you have limited availability of space and in this case you have vertical growth of the slums that has been seen in the major cities in India. A good example is from NCR from the Chal regions of Mumbai. So you have the development of the slums in a vertical fashion that has been registered and the recent Yojana edition talked about the blue polygon settlement which is very very important for your 2020 examination again. So we have talked about blue polygon settlement now these are the settlements which occur as a small rectangular settlements uh, on four poles that are seen and these show the slum regions in a uh, city area. And that determine how uh, the prices of the land is correlated and with higher pricing of the land, uh, the slums are going vertically. The next is Footloose India and the development in the backward regions. Now this is again a very very interesting topic. What actually happens, a region which is actually backward is backward because no industrial development came to that region. and as a result it was backward so you can uh, work on any of the regional development theory which talks about convergence and that would lead you to the establishment of the backward regions in the economy or the regional re regional planning now with this backward region what happens is you have the only way to prosper them is bringing in a footloose industry now since these are footloose industries uh, the cost does not matter so you would have only the manpower that would have to move and that could bring in growth prospects to the backward economy so understanding the footloose industry and its implication on a backward region would be very very uh, I could say positive in terms of the development of the backward region. Since these footloose industry do not have a reason to establish themselves closer to a transport uh, system, closer to the market, closer to the raw material, they are footloose. Okay, so that's why they could be established at any good location. And backward region could be one of the regions that could be taken in. Glacier Lake out, uh, Outburst Flood, GLOF, is one of the very important concepts we already talked about in our expected questions and here you had the question back on it. So we have already discussed that in the class. You can just follow the link. The next is intra-basin linkages of river is more feasible economically, uh, socially and eco uh, ecologically. How do we understand this? Now, when we are saying 
the river basin connection what we are trying to say let's say you have ganga you have brahmaputra the most important river krishna godavari navda tapti the most important thing is you have certain parts of the regions or the country which have a lot of flood situation on the other hand you have parts of the country which are drought prone so what we are trying to do is we are trying to establish a connection between the two and make a uh, water disparity reduced and this reduction could happen through interlinking of the rivers and the intra basin linkages so within the basin let's say narmada well, uh, valley development authority and the water resource development department has been working with the governments of maharashtra to develop sub projects now these major sub projects have been developed near the regions of onkareshwar uh, near the regions of narmada sagar and wherever you have a surplus water that is being directed so once it happens in the intra basin it could be extended to the inter basin and there is where you have the interlinking of the rivers that is seen so this is one of the examples the narmada valley uh, the regions of onkareshwar the regions of narmada similarly you have the regions on godavari and kaveri that we have discussed in the down to earth edition previously so those are some of the very very important points that you have to bring into account most of the questions were very very direct and very 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 i would say a uh, contemporary in nature so it's very very important that you cover the recent happenings the coverage that we have been doing through yojana kurukshetra and down to earth incorporate that into your answers it's most essential so keep the study material ready with you and just keep a uh, top up with all the recent happenings now here is another question on emerging conurbations now when i say conurbations now what kind of conurbation we are talking about it could be considering the movement of the people movement of the capital transport it could be let's say uh, control of the pollution it could be any of the criteria that you are trying to say but we have a region where you are comprising a bigger city smaller towns around that city and you are trying to understand the population growth and the physical expansion of that region so that is where you have the conurbation that works now what is most essential thing that we take into account the first most essential thing is the physical structure the next is the self sustaining system so most of the conurbations need to be self sustaining and there has to be a kind of spatial uh, dimension and capital investment that has to flow in so conurbations have been emerging in india and definitely once once you have bigger conurbations moving in you have associated problems with those where you have the problem of spacing problem of price rise problem of traffic pollution uh, so all those are associated aspect that grow with it however uh, recently if we talk about some of the best examples you have the ncr region the mohali region uh, connecting the regions of amritsar jalandhar in punjab so those are some of the classic examples where we talk about emerging conurbations the next is green tourism for sustainable development of mountain environment in india now through one of the uh, Uh, periodicals that was released which focused on the changing climate of the himalayas this is where you have uh, the key focus that's there so mountain eco tourism is one of the important aspects that we are trying to promote tourism in general if we say uh, degrades the natural and the cultural environment because you have a lot of flow of the people coming in mismanagements that could happen and uh, a similar question that was there in this paper only that was regarding the mount everest so uh, all those issues come up however with international collaborations with collaborations from unesco with collaborations with international mountaineering uh, eco tourism sites we have come up with various criterias and indicators where mountain locations could be selected as eco tourism destinations and these could be developed through the sustainable development and green tourism initiative so that is where we are trying to environmentally uh, protect those regions bring in uh, better quality experience for the visitors as well. Well. the next is the role of interstate migration and regional disparity now this is where you have to understand the trend from the bimaru states now most of the states which are doing in well in terms of per capita income in terms of uh, fiscal generation you have a migration a tend to migrate to those states 
so there is definitely a kind of interstate migration that is seen mainly from the regions of northern india towards the states of west and south and that is where you have a huge lot of regional disparity because you have the movement of people to these regions as a result the economy of these states starts to prosper however where the outflow is there there is again uh, no economic initiatives that are taking place and no uh, employment generation opportunities no fiscal revenue growth and opportunities that are seen so all of those are interlinked here so that is what you have to highlight in this question the next question is high level of pollutions in north indian cities as compared to south indian cities uh, south india so this is a very very important question and this was highlighted in the down to earth edition of may 2018 and the idea was uh, when the who report was released regarding the pollution globally 14 of the 20 top cities were from india and those 14 cities were from north india so there is definitely a trend of high levels of pollution in north india as compared to south india now how does and why does this happen first of all the reasons for wind convergence the north india you have a lot of loose alluvial soil that is seen that is another one of the reasons you have seasonal variations in particulate matter concentration that is seen and most importantly you have uh, two important aspects that we will consider one is towards the south you have the coastal breeze and because of the coastal breeze you have the dissipation of the pollution levels that is seen that is one of the most important criteria the second most important criteria is creation of the valley effect in the regions of of north and because of this valley effect what happens is all the polluted air gets towards the valley and is unable to escape and since it's unable to escape it creates or increases the pollution in that region basically forming the low pressure zones and wind convergence and that's where we geographically try to understand why the cities in the north have higher level of pollution as compared to the cities in the south the next is incentive oriented uh, programs to remove regional imbalances now here is where you would have to mention a to z most of the programs or be it the tribal area development the hill area development program the western ghats development program the drought prone area development program the desert development program so all those are some of the uh, programs that would be jotted down in this answer the idea is to uh, bring in parity remove the interstate regional disparities that are there and uh, the disparities that are seen mainly in terms of the backward regions the next is with a special reason, uh, reference to india examine the changes in the international trade patterns now india's foreign trade has been drastically changing over the years we have seen the imports have expanded at a faster pace than exports which is not favorable for the economy but that is where you have seen uh, what is true so exports have increased 16 times but imports have jumped up to 20 times now you have a case where even the agricultural product is being imported in a country where you have a lot of agriculture and you have 70% of the population that relies on agriculture similar goes with the case of oil imports that is seen uh, so you have a substitution that is required from uh, the non renewable to the renewable energy where those energies could be generated within the country be it the solar energy be it the wind energy and therefore you have a higher number of imports that have been uh, witnessed over the years now balance of payment has been drastically disturbed because of this so all those are some of the most important aspects that you need to bring in now coming on to the geo environmental hazards of himalaya both altitudinally and spatially now this is the when we talk about the greater himalayan region which is considered as the roof of the world what is happening is there has been a rapid reduction in the amount of glaciers that is seen so glacial retreat rising temperature climate change and because of that water related hazards growth in the vector borne diseases so all those are affecting the uh the environmental conditions of the himalaya uh this has been a very very important focus as we have seen in this exam so you had nearly 3 to 4 questions directly or indirectly associated to this this was one of this then you had the uh, valley effect where you had the pollution levels in the north and the south the impact of mountaineering on himalayas the concept where you have to bring in deep ecology glof the glacial lake outburst so all of those related to the himalayan ecosystem 
problem has been a very very important concept and this has been part of the national action plan for climate change of india where himalayan region has been given a specific priority so be prepared as per the nation, national action plan on climate change you have to take into account the other criterias that we have covered in this lecture so very very important to understand those criterias and the last question was india is emerging as a global power in relation to the indian ocean relief uh, now here the recent indian navy uh, tussle that was with the china uh, ships has been important so you can just jot down that uh, over the years we have seen that the defense projects with india have increased in the indian ocean from 11 to 34 now most of the emerging powers in the indian ocean if we say Besides India, are the countries like Indonesia, Bangladesh. Uh, you have Somalia, South Africa, UAE. So those are some of the leading powers. And besides that, you have the BIMSTEC. BIMSTEC is uh, the kind of Bay of Bengal initiative for uh, the technical and the economic cooperation. So there is where you are trying to promote good relation with uh, the trade and uh, the development and a kind of trade-free uh, agreement that is seen between these countries. However, this has been affected by some of the parameters now these could be in the form of let's say overfishing that is seen uh, pollution degradation of the coastal environment uh, besides this the development of indian india in the terms of indian ocean relief has been remarkable with more of economic growth trade liberalization those are some of the key factors that you have to address in this answer so with this we cover uh both the papers for year 2019 definitely uh, we would be coming up with most important questions expected questions before your examination 2020 and throughout the se uh, season we would have the map location based on the contemporary topics as was seen for this year including the map locations for this year so stay subscribed keep updated yourself with the channel updates have a wonderful day